Okay, um, good evening to everyone. Can you hear me? Good evening. Hi, good evening, Lorena. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening, guys. <laughs> good evening, Angela. Okay, welcome, welcome. So uh, we're going to start in a few minutes. Um, well, a happy person um, exercises for you in order to develop to date. Uh, I hope that most of you connect today because we're going to be developing uh, some uh, exercise on online. It's going to be in groups or probably in peers if you are not enough in order to, to work in the breakout rooms. But, uh, well, we're going to wait to see how many of you connect today. I mean, tonight. Um, give me just one moment while I uh, set up some things here in my computer. One minute, please. Okay, perfect. Um, I was just verifying that some of you have already connected to um, the video conference that corresponds for today. Hi, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes, teacher. Yes, okay, very good. So, uh, well, I, I was telling you that I was just verifying that some of you have already connected. So, uh, we're going to start with um, the class that corresponds for today. And I want to share uh, the first lesson objective that we're going to be working on uh, tonight. Give me just one moment here. And okay, there it is. Can you see my screen now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, we have the first lesson objected, and it says by the end of this lecture, participants will be able to use relative pronouns who and that as subjects. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, I need to ask you something. Have you ever listened about 
uh, related pronouns. Do you know what are those? Do you know what are related pronouns? Yes, no? No, maybe no. <laughs> Okay. Like words that, that you use to 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 get together to to different sentences and and you can submit the, the word the pronoun and just use who or, or that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh well who or that as part of what we call related pronouns. Um okay, we're going to start uh, just verifying. Well, in this case, identifying uh, what are related pronouns. Uh, related pronouns, uh, as the word says, um, there are words that we use in order to connect sentences or, or sometimes ideas, uh, and we use it in, in, in a sentence in order to identify it, uh, the pronoun or the person that we're talking about uh, using words like who using words like that, or where um, sometimes uh, we use some WH, WH words as related pronouns. We have uh, some examples of it, uh, for instance, uh, whose, which, that, uh, where, when, and uh, also we have why. And if I remember, we can use what to in order to use it as related pronouns. Um, but um, before going on to that uh, part, explaining uh, more about related pronouns, I want to play the video that you have um, in section number one. Um, we have a video with some of uh, most common, uh, or, or the common related pronouns in English, that is who and that. We are going to identify when do we use who and when do we use that, okay? Also, um, there in that video, you're going to see some examples of it, uh, like the ones, well, you are just uh, checking here in this in this video right now, just in the first screen that we have in, in, in this section, okay? So uh, I'm going to play this video, then we're going to be talking a little bit, a little bit more about the related pronouns, because the related pronouns, uh, we can use this as subject, and also we can use this as subject. And each of uh, each uh, structure here has a, 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 its own composition, and, and the way that we're gonna use it, the way that we're going to use uh, who and that's gonna uh, be uh, different for each case. Okay, so um, give me just one moment. Just going to expand this and I will play this video. Let me know if you cannot hear the audio of this video, okay? Because uh, if not, uh, I will fix it. Okay, just pay attention to this part first. Hello, everyone. In this class, you learn how to describe the kind of people you like to hang around with. For example, I like friends who aren't too serious. You'll learn how to use the relative pronouns who or that. Now let me get started by presenting the structure. We'll do a few examples and at the end of the class I would like for you to practice by making your own examples. Let me talk about the first example that you see here, relative pronouns as subjects. So in essence what we want to do in this class is we want to take two pieces of information for example, I like guys. They aren't too serious. That's the second piece of information. And what we want to do is we want to combine these two pieces of information. And we do this by using the relative pronouns. We're either going to use who or that to combine those two pieces of information. So at the end, what the sentence is going to look like is I like guys who aren't too serious. Or you could say, I like guys that aren't too serious. I'm going to write down those examples 
to make sure that we're understanding the process. The first example states, I like guys, they aren't too serious. And what we do is, if you notice in grade up here, and I actually colored that in blue in the bottom, because that's what I want to focus on. Um, here, this statement here could vary, it could change to different things, right? Like you can say, I like guys, I like friends, okay? I like people. So that could vary. You could change that to whatever you want. You can have another phrase there, like I uh, like to hang around people, I like to be with friends, etc. That phrase could change, not just necessarily I like guys. And then they aren't too serious. Um, in this case, I want you to notice that we're using adjectives. All right. So whenever you use adjectives, what you're going to have in this uh, second statement is going to be uh, the verb to be either positive or negative. Okay. Um, and then the and then that's going to follow the adjective. And so what I want you to notice at this time is how we take these two pieces of information and we combine them together with the usage of the relative pronouns who or that. So let me give that example now. I like guys who aren't too serious. I like guys that aren't too serious. Now, what I want to explain here is that you can either use the relative pronoun who or you can use the relative pronoun that. And also what I want you to notice is that in um, this statement, so they will disappear. The pronoun here is they that disappear. And we changed it to they uh, to and we changed it to who or we changed it to that. Okay, so I like guys who aren't too serious. This is on our first example. Let me talk about the second example now. Yeah. And the reason this one is different is because we're no longer going to use adjectives. Uh, so that changes a little bit. Uh, but again, it's the same concept as previously. What we want to do here is we want to combine two pieces of information. What are those two pieces of information? Well, I like guys, that's one piece of information, and then they have a good sense of humor. Now, in this case, notice that we're using a verb, um, and that's because we're using a noun to uh, mention the kind of people that we like to hang around with. So I like guys, or I like friends, I mentioned that you can change this to whatever you like. Um, that phrase could change to something else as well. So I like, the way that you would change this is to say something similar will happen, and that is that uh, the uh, pronoun on the second uh, piece of information will disappear and that will disappear by either who or by using that so in other words the statement will state I like guys that have a good sense of humor or I like guys who have a good sense of humor Now let me get you to do a few examples. I'm, we're going to do one last one together and then I'm going to have you do a few more. We want to take these two pieces of information. I like to meet people. They are sociable. So we got two pieces of information and what we want to do here is we want to put these two together. We're just going to remove the pronoun they and we're going to change it for a relative pronoun, either who or that. So that was quite simple. I like to meet people who are sociable. And I mentioned you can either say, I like to meet people that are sociable. OK, um, well, we're in this stuff here, eight. and we're going to see how it works. Uh, but first of all, we need to um, just get a definition of um, some parts of these kind of sentences. Uh, first of all, do you know what are pronouns? Yes. Yes. Okay. What are what are pronouns? Yours, hers, his, him, theirs. What are the pronouns? Okay. Okay. Good. Yes. That that that's a. Uh, belongs to um, uh, some group of pronouns and, and it's good. Okay, 
So, um, but um, defining what is pranon, uh, we can say that pranons are words that assisted uh, or replace the noun in, in a sentence. Uh, the most common uh, pronouns that we have in English are I, you, he, she, it, it, uh, we, they, um, and also you, because we have uh, two different uses for that, for, for um, those words, okay? So uh, if we are going to define that, we can say that pronouns are words that replace the noun, okay? Okay. Okay, good. So um, now we're going to take a look about uh, what, uh, what are um, related pronouns. Um, so when we talk about related pronouns, um, we are going to identify that um, these are used always uh, at the beginning of an adjective clause. Okay, but as you can see there, um, these related pronouns uh, can be used uh, as subjects and also can be used as objects. Uh, when we refer to an adjective clause, we're going to say that uh, this is a definite clause that modifies the noun, okay? Because we are adding um, some uh, specific information or we are describing something or we are just um, giving some, um, you can say like um, uh, features or uh, characteristics to uh, the nouns. And um, as, you, as you can see there, we, we are just discussing about two different kind of relative pronouns right now. Uh, we have who and also we have that, but also uh, we can include um, another relative pronoun that, that is useful when we construct sentences uh, and this is which, uh, which, the word which, like the ones that we use uh, for the WH words. So uh, we have which, who, and that, okay? Those can be considered as related pronouns. We're going to start with whom, because um, whom has a, a, another variation, um, and this variation, it is used for uh, possessive when we use it as relative pronouns. I don't know if you have if you have here uh, about the word whose. It's like who, but with S E at the end, whose. Have you ever uh, used that word before? I guess it's gonna be better if I share my, uh, my whiteboard here and I'm just writing down there. Uh, the words that I'm mentioning right now. Okay, because I, I just need to explain some things about the uses of relative pronouns because, um, well, there is no only who and that that are considered as relative pronouns. There are some other words too. Okay, give me just one moment. Let me share the whiteboard. Can you see the whiteboard now? Yes. Okay, very good. Have you ever used this word? Who's? Yes. Yes. You know the meaning of it? Who's? Who's? Yes? Who's? 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 Yes, no? No, very much. No, no, okay. Uh, well, just let me tell you that this is just a variation of uh, this word. Okay, just take a look of this. That, uh, show this, and this. Okay, just let me write this. Ooh. Okay, who? Um, who has two different forms? The first one, whose, is considered um, the possessive form of who, and whom is considered the object form, and it's gonna be whom, okay? The, uh, uh, the, this is gonna be the uh, object form of who, okay? So um, who and whom are used mainly for people, 
You know, so uh, we can say that this pronouns uh, can be used to refer sometimes to animal that are mentioned by name or in seen as persons. Okay, there is just uh, some um, uh, special uses of it. Okay, uh, in the case of who and whom, we, we always gonna use who when we refer to people, okay? But there are some times that in, in the context, uh, the context of the sentence or the, that we're going to be using uh, who or in this case, whom. Um, so, you know, for some uh, animals that are mentioned uh, by name or as seen like a uh, person, for instance, we can use it uh, when we are uh, telling tales uh, to children, so because we personalize uh, the, the characters. Uh, Karen, go ahead. Good evening, teacher. Uh, uh, can you uh, give me an example, please, in, in, in Spanish? Because I don't understand very well. Please. Uh, you mean uh, which is who? Uh, who uh, with with uh, with, uh, with two. Because I, I I know with when to use who, mm -hmm. okay, well, it's like quien, but whose and whom in the person, uh, I don't understand you. Okay, uh, well, um, I, I guess uh, I, I can give you some examples, for instance, uh, because we're talking relatives, we use to connect uh, two different sentences. For instance, we, we can use the man whose daughter won the tournament is a tennis coach. Uh, the man whose daughter, okay? So um, I mentioned before that uh, we use whose in order to say uh, or identify uh, the possessive form of someone, okay? So if we say, uh, for instance, uh, well, the, the same examples that I'm using right now, the man whose daughter won Okay, the men whose, um, in this case, we are given the possession to who? It's gonna be the men. Um, th this is just an example of, of, of the use of um, the possessive form that we are referring, in, well, in this case, just let me uh, just underline this part here, okay, whose. Um, is it better, probably, if I just uh, type it down here, I mean, write it down here um, in the whiteboard? Give, give me just a moment. Okay, let me uh, just this sentence, the, the, the one that I have here. Um, the men. Okay, well, it just must be like men. Teacher. Tell me. Tell me. Teacher. Excuse me, my my ignorance. Uh, in the structure, uh, what is the difference between who and that? Or will the center necessarily tell me? Uh, do you want to know the difference between uh, who and that? Yeah. Uh, okay, very good. So I, I can explain that, but just give me one moment while I explain uh, uh, the uses of who uh, using relative, uh, using this word as relative pronouns, then I will be uh, I will be explaining you the difference be, between using who and using that. Okay. 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 Give me just one moment. Um, I was writing this. Um, it's a tennis coach. Okay, um, man, just take a look at this uh, sentence here. Um, it says, the man whose daughter won. Um, if we are referring here to this word, the use of who, I mean, um, who's, okay. 
If we use whose, we are just identifying the position of someone. And also we are using, um, in adding some extra information uh, for um, this, well, this structure. So the man whose daughter, okay. Um, in a sentence here, we are um, like referring to a positive uh, relative pronoun. Why? Because we are joining one sentence with another one in order to add a, or to modify or to describe something else uh, in um, the information that we are providing uh, or that we are using in order to provide someone else. So the man whose daughter, so that's mean uh, a possession of someone. Um, so, and also we are going to add, just in this part, one determinant, determinant, okay, like here, in just one moment, remove my camera, okay, one term, tournament, and in that case must be like is, not us, is, I, I, I may say there, is a tennis coach, just, <laughs> My apologies for that, but I, but I, I I'll try to, well, I, I will try to fix it. Let just let me. One moment. Must be is instead of us. Um, is it possible to change it? Okay, yes, yes. Okay, is a tennis coach. What is the extra information that we are providing in this sentence? Do you know that? Can you just identify uh, what is the information that we are adding, like uh, an extra information that we are adding to this uh, sentence? Yes, no? Maybe a second subject. This second subject, okay. Uh, well, just let me explain this part. Uh, just one moment to use this part. And I guess I will be using, um, I'm gonna use a different color. One moment, I will use green. Okay, just take a look of this part. All this um, sentence, is considered as relative. Why? Relative why? First of all, because we are just adding some extra information that is not given in the main idea of the sentence. Um, if, if, do, you, do you know what are uh, the elements that we need in order to construct a sentence? No. Do you know the basic elements in order to construct sentences? The subject, a verb and a complement. Yeah, very good. So um, just take a look of this part. Just check it out here. Let me see if it is possible to identify it then. This is going to be the subject, OK? Um, OK, just let me shirt something else here. This is going to be the word. And this is going to be the complement. There we have the three elements. The man is a tennis coach. Okay, this is the sentence that we have, the, the basic sentence that we have. The man is a tennis coach. We are given a, a, a specific information um, using just those elements, subject, verb, and complement. Okay, so it, the rest of the information that we have here in um, in this in this uh, sentence, and just let me show you this part in this way. All this all these um, relative clause, okay. Um, it is considered as an extra information that we provide to someone else, and um, this extra information. 
we start giving, uh, or we start just providing that, uh, uh, well, statements yes, using a related product. That in this case will be like, um, uh, for instance, if we use who or if we use that, okay? Uh, the only thing that I need, th that I want you I to uh, explain. Go ahead, Angela. <laughs> Excuse me. Ah, okay, now don't worry. The only thing that I want to explain to you is that instead of using who, we can use some other variations of it, okay? When we are going to express something as a possessive form, we can use a whose, okay? Or um, if we want just to add an extra information, that's gonna be like the object form, we can use whom, but also we can use who too in order to add, um, um, well, just an extra information as a relative pronoun. Um, and uh, as you know, well, when, we're, when we refer to in a specific person, uh, we can use who in order to just replace the name of that person. I will give you some um, other examples of it. Uh, for instance, uh, this is a, a, an example using just who? The musician, okay? The musician who wrote the son is Canadian. Okay, there we have. Just take a look of this. The three elements, always. We are going to have three elements, subject, uh, also the verb, and also we are going to add sometimes a, a complement. This is no, this sometimes it's not necessary to add a, a complement, but sometimes, yes, we can include it, not just in order to um, give a better understanding of, of the sentence that we're referring to. Um, but just take a look of this. Subject, verb, and complement. The musician is Canadian, okay? Easy, right? So, uh, this is something that we can say to someone and uh, it has a meaning, okay? But if we want to add a specific information in order to identify who is that musician, we can add a relative clause. Um, a relative clause is going to be always, um, it's going to be starting always, I mean, a, with a relative pronoun. What is the relative pronoun there? Can you identify the relative pronoun? Well, the, the new sound who? Yes. Who is going to be the relative pronoun? Who? Okay. In the related clause, is gonna be the, the complete related clause, is gonna be like who wrote this song. Okay, the musician who wrote this song is Canadian. All that part is considered extra information. All that part is considered uh, in grammar as relative clause. Okay. Sometimes can be used in just one sentence, uh, or um, we can say that, um, well, in this case, uh, sometimes it's not necessary in order to add that. Uh, I mean, it's not necessary to add that information in order to um, uh, explain something to someone. Okay, something, yes, because we need to be more specific to what we are referring to. So if we want to be more specific, we can use the relative clauses that always are going to start with a relative pronoun. Is it clear? Yes. Yes. Okay, very good. So now let's see the difference between using who and using that. So, um, okay, my apologies. Uh, one moment. What did I do here? Okay, there we have. Okay, uh, my apologies. Well, just take a look of this. Um, uh, 
there is another uh, options that we have uh, instead of using uh, that it's gonna be which you know which this this word which this is the other options uh, for using that okay so we want to see each of them um but first of all, I, I just want to explain something here. What is the difference of using who and that? And then I will explain when do we use which and when do we use that, okay? So the difference between who and that. Who, it's going to be always used for people. When we refer to people or when we refer to one person, Okay, who? In that, it can be used to, um, uh, can be used as relative, uh, as relative pronoun in order to replace people, animal, or things. Okay, people, animals, or things. Um, is, if we use that, it's gonna be like general. Okay, so we can use, instead of using who, that, but we cannot use who instead of using that. I, I don't know, is it clear that statement? Um, what I mean is that is for general uses because we can use it uh, for people, animals, or things. And who is only used when we refer to people. Is it clear? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yes. Okay, yes. very good. Okay, very good. Excellent. So, um, if we have a sentence, um, for instance, uh, the, the one that we have there, it says the musician who wrote this song is Canadian. Okay. If we want to replace that relative pronoun, is it possible? So, we can use instead of who, the musician that wrote this song is Canadian. Okay, and it's going to be correct. Okay, but uh, if I use, uh, for instance, just let me uh, verify uh, a different a, a different sentence using um, a thing, for instance. I, I'm going to write this sentence. Okay, um, the car. Okay, apologies. Must be the car. That Jason. The Jason Bolt. Um, I just is not my dad. Bolt. Okay. Um. We. What. What. What else we can say in the sentence? Runs. Uh, right. No, we're gonna use runs. Okay. Like this. Runs, and we're going to add um on electric. Uh, electricity and gas. Okay. The card that Jason Ball runs on a uh, electricity. Elec, I guess it's missing the letter R here. Electricity. I, I guess that that's a correct spelling for that for that word. Okay. Just take a look at this part. I uh, wanna identify each element. Can you just identify the, uh, what is the subject there? What is the subject? The car. The car, perfect. Oh. This is gonna be the car. Uh, what is the verb that we are using here, the main verb? Boat. Mm. Rounds. It's gonna be? Rounds. Runs, okay, okay. The car runs gonna be the verb, the main verb, and the complement. On electricity. Okay, on, on electricity, electricity gas. gas. Okay, this is going to be the complement. Okay, the car runs on electricity and gas. Okay, this is the main sentence. 
Okay, this is gonna be the main sentence. Now, um, so if we want to add an extra information in order to be more specific about what car we um, are we referring to, we can add that related sentence or that related clause. Okay, what is the related clause here? That. That Jason vote. Okay, the Jason vote. That's gonna be the relative clause. Just let me change the color here and use this word. Okay, here. That Jason vote. Perfect. That is the relative clause. No. What is the relative pronoun? It's that. Yeah. That, okay, just that, okay? That's going to be the relative pronoun. Now, here uh, we are referring to the car. The car is considered people, animal, or thing. Thing. Okay, perfect. Okay, excellent. Well, in that case, we are going to be using that because that is the general form of a relative clause, okay? Is it yes. possible to use who there? Is it possible to use who? No. Instead no. of that? Why not? Because the car is not a person. Yes, exactly. And that's the main uh, point or, or the, the, the main issue uh, when we use who in, in sentences. If it is not a person, we cannot use who, okay? Who is just um, used when we refer to people, okay? That's it. Who is used for people? And that is used for people, for uh, animals, or for things. Is it clear? Yes. Okay, perfect. Excellent, guys. Um, now we are going to be working on an activity. Um, in, we are going to be working in pairs. Just let me see how many people uh, we have here in this video conference. Just let me take a look of this. We are 18, I guess if we gonna be night, uh, yeah. Okay, we're going to be working in pairs. Um, I'm going to create the breakout rooms right now and I will send you to, um, uh, well, this is gonna be assigned automatically. Give me just one moment, it's gonna be just night. Oh, I guess. No, we're going to change the things. We're going to do trios, okay? Is it so much better in order to work on this activity? Um, okay, um, just let me verify here. If everybody has a name on it. Yes. Okay, please. Okay, good. Well, guys, um, we're going to be working on activities gonna be in trios. Um, I'm going to assign you an activity. This is gonna be a worship that you are going to be solving about the uses of relative pronouns. Um, you can help each other in order to solve it, uh, but you at the end must present just one activity. Um, and you have to include the name of all the uh, members of this trios, okay? Um, the evidence you're going to send, uh, you're going to send it using the WhatsApp group. There, you're going to share a, if you want a screenshot, or if you want, you can take a, a photo um, to your computer or to your cell phone. I don't know. You decide uh, what method uh, can you use in order to send the evidence. Um, but 
um, when you send that, well, after you send, uh, I, I mean, after you take the screenshot photo or, or uh, I don't know, so you decide, uh, you need to upload that evidence um, to WhatsApp, okay? And there you can share um, this, uh, well, I mean, and there you have to add uh, the names of the three members but everybody needs to work on it, okay? If someone doesn't want to work with you or is not interested in participating in the, in the development of this activity, uh, guys, do not include him or her, okay? Is it clear what we're going to do? So, yes. uh, what we, uh, okay, the general instruction is so, the worship that I will share to you. Um, just I need to tell you something, uh, the, and, and this is because, um, well, first of all, I cannot share the the worship here right now, just for some specific reason, because um, we cannot use um, materials or um, activities that doesn't belong to. Inglés Corporativo, we can use it, okay? But we cannot share uh, in the video conference because it's gonna be recorded uh, in the video conference and all the uh, video conference, you know, are uploaded to YouTube. And YouTube has some restrictions on it. I don't know if you have heard about it, but uh, when someone uh, violates the copyright, they penalize uh, when someone uploads a video. So because of the copyright, um, I cannot share it in my screen right now in the video conference, um, the activity that we are going to share, but you can see that activity in the link that I'm going to share to you. If you have any question, you can take a picture uh, or you can uh, just let me know if the, if, well, in this case, the, the item or the exercise uh, that probably the instructions is not clear and um, you can ask me using WhatsApp group or you can ask me here also, uh, but we can assure that material. I don't know if it, if it is clear what I'm saying. Yes. Is it clear? Yes, okay, very good. Okay, guys, uh, give me just one relative. What is it, this document? Okay, here we have. One moment. I'm just referring to something here. Okay, perfect. Uh, any of you have uh, the uh, WhatsApp web? Ensure the, the that link in the WhatsApp group. I already shared the link here in the in the chat box. I don't know if you can share that link uh, in WhatsApp group. And there was a group, I mean. Podría alguno de ustedes, no sé si tendrán abierto el, el, el WhatsApp web, que este, alguien que tenga abierto el WhatsApp web, este que comparta por favor el enlace en el grupo para que todos tengamos acceso 
al ejercicio. No sé si ya lo revisaron, está en el, en el chat box de la videoconferencia, aquí en Zoom. ¿Ya tienen acceso? Ángela, eh, Lorena, Elvin. Ajá, uh, but I can see because it's, uh, it's too small, the words. Let me, let me. Mm. Uh, I don't know how to. In my, in my case, I uh, didn't send the, the link for the group. Okay, I, I guess someone someone else has shared the link here in the, in the WhatsApp group. You can go there and, and click on it and uh, where you're going to see the worship that we're going to be working on. And yeah, yes. it's better in, in, the, in the WhatsApp group. Okay, perfect. So you can go there and there you have the exercises. Um, now, what I'm going to do is to open the breakout rooms and each trio is going to be working on it. You can ask to your uh, classmates and also, uh, well, you can practice your English by um, identifying the answers of this, okay? Let me just open. Um, you're going to receive a notification, please click on it. And when you click on it and, and, and you say that uh, you're going to join to the breakout rooms or you're going to move there, you're going to have a, well, let's see, seven minutes in order to solve those exercises. If you cannot solve those exercises, don't worry. You can uh, work on it later after the video conference, okay? I'm going to open the, all the breakout rooms right now. Please just click on it and join to the breakout room. Marlon, Jensi, and Vanessa. Hola. Uh, you didn't receive the notification. No recibió oh, la notificación. Eh, Vanessa, no recibió la notificación para unirse al breakout room. Hello, hello. Hi, Marlon. Um, Mario and Jose Carlos, ¿están ahí? Hello. Hello. Yes. yes. Hello. Dice, para trabajar el ejercicio pueden este, compartir las pantallas. Okay. Dicho, yo ya intenté, pero este, tiene bloqueado usted el, 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 el déjeme, compartir pantallas en el grupo. Eh, déjeme este, revisar eso. You can start. Eh, vamos a ver. Who can share? Ah, perdón. Intenté ahora. Ahí está. Me voy a mover un momento. Vamos a ver. Por sentences. Ana Hu. Ana Hu is wearing a uh, Is it better? Is it so much better if you share your screen uh, in order to work on the exercises, uh, Kevin, Elmer, and Jensi? You can share the screen here. Pueden compartir sus. Pueden compartir la pantalla si gustan para trabajar este mejor. No lo podemos hacer en la en la principal. Pero este, en los breakout rooms sí se puede utilizar. ¿Ok? Ok. 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 Joana. 
Hi, teacher. Hola, este, no estaba usted asignada a alguno de los grupos. Mi conexión se está lloviendo muy fuerte y se me desconectó ah. el inter. No yeah. recuerdo con quién estaba trabajando para moverlo. Eh, no, 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 no sé quiénes eran. En ese momento se me desconectó. Okay. Vale, la, la voy a mover a un grupo que ahorita tiene dos eh, participantes, ¿de acuerdo? Ok, Le va a quedar la notificación. Ok. Teacher, excuse me. Teacher, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Teacher, hear you. in the in the link you send us um, in the two exercise, what is the correct to uh, use that, who uh, that who and which, or only you choose uh, in in the two sentences. Uh. Because I, I I confused if we like uh, number one, the snail that lives in the forest, or only is the the snail lives in the forest. Okay, uh, well in that case, um, the, the situation here is that you need to uh, construct a sentence um, using both. Um, and what I mean is you have to construct just one sentence using both. 
the snail, uh, it's gonna be the, sub, the subject that is repeated. So for that reason, um, you are going to use the first one as the main subject and the second one as an extra information or uh, as we say, as a relative clause, okay? Uh, because there we have, it says the, the snails wears a blue hat, okay? Uh, what kind of relative word, um, I, mean, I mean, what I mean is, uh, what kind of relative uh, pronoun do we use in order to introduce the relative clause? The snail? Oh. The snail is gonna be uh, who, that, or which? No. Okay, okay, well, we're gonna wanna, wanna see that. Okay, we're gonna use that. The snail that lives in the forest wears a blue hat. Okay, um, just let me, well, just, just let me show you um, an example of it using the white boy. Teacher. Teacher, so in these exercises, uh, we need to do join two uh, sentences. Yes, that's correct. But just uh, uh, okay. Give me just one moment. I'm going to. What I'm going to do is just to uh, write here the examples in order to um, explain you a little bit more about how we are going to construct this kind of sentence. Okay, one moment. Nails. Uh, we'll say wears. Okay. A blue hat. I don't know if someone is it so much better if someone uh, read the sentence for me, please. Blue hat. The snail. What is the thread of, of the sentence? The snail. Leaves in the forest. Is what? Leaves in the forest. Leaves. Ah, leaves in the forest. Leaves. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Leaves. In the forest, you say, right? Okay, there we have both sentences. Sentence number one, um, sentence number one, and sentence number two. Okay, what we're going to do is just uh, create one sentence using both. What we're going to, to do is use one sentence as the main clause in the second sentence as a relative clause. In this case, this is going to be, we have, well, you, you there have, have identified what is the subject. What is the subject? It's my, it's okay, the snail. It's snail. Okay, it's snail. Okay, there. Because this is, um, just let me uh, just write here. It, okay. This is going to be the, the main uh, sentence. And the second one is going to be the related clause. In this case, um, what related pronouns do we have to use in order to complete that, in order to add that sentence uh, to the main clause? But that, okay, that, what else? What else? In this case, we're going to use the information, remember. We're going to use the information after the relative, yes, after the relative pronoun. The snail that, then we're going to add lips, in the forest. And then what are we going to add? Well, a blue hat. Okay. Where's a blue hat? Perfect. We wanna add where's a blue hat. Well. And there we have a related sentence. So 
it, basically what we have to do with both of them is just to join the first one as main sentence and the second one as a related sentence because we are just including both information in, in one sentence. This is gonna be okay. the relative. Instead of using the snail again, we are going to use a relative a pronoun in order to, um, to don't use the double subject, okay? The snail, okay, that lives in the forest, wears a blood hat, okay? Oh, um, okay, or, or also, it can be the opposite of it. The snail, okay, that wears a blue hat lives in the forest. So is it possible to use uh, the first one as the main clause and the second one as the relative clause or the opposite? The second one as the uh, main clause or in, in the first one as the relative clause? Okay. Is it clear? Question. Go ahead. Uh, how identify the information is more important? No, no. Uh, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying right now is that we can use both. So instead of using, um, uh, for instance, instead of using here the snail, okay, that wears a new hat. Okay, it's lives in the, in the forest. And it's going to be the same, okay? Is it possible, it's possible to the use, page. yes, if we can switch them. That's right, okay. Okay, okay. thank you. There is no, uh, uh, well, there in both sentence, there is no uh, a sentence that is most more important than the other one. Uh, both of them can be used as the main clause in relative clause or the relative clause uses main clause and the uh, main clause uses as a relative. Uh, Karen, go ahead. Thank you, teacher. Excuse me, I don't understand why it is connection with two sentence because on the first I talk about the snail wears a blue hat and the other, I I talk about leaves in the forest, so I don't understand where is connection. The wears a blue hat, leaves in the story forest, and maybe can you use that uh, you use that too in this in this case. For example, yeah. this nail that wears a blue hat, and and or that I don't know. I think lives in the forest. Mm, um, I can, well, in, in this case, ma'am, um, what we have to do there, so probably you, you cannot see the connection because we have to do the, the we have to create a connection just in one sentence. Um, here, what we have to do is just to, um, just let me underline this part, okay? Um, there, what we have to do is just to provide some extra information, ma'am. Um, it's not like a, if we have to connect each sentence with the other one. What we have to do is just to change the subject with a related pronoun in order to uh, avoid double subject. In this case, uh, is it possible to use this nail that wears a blue hat lives in the forest or the opposite, this nails that lives in the forest wears a blue hat? So basically what we are doing here is just adding extra information um, to one of the sentences, using the other one as a support of it in order to identify or be more specific um, using relative, uh, relative clauses, okay? I don't know, is it clear? I need practice teacher, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> No, okay, well, well, we are going to be uh, working on it. Uh, probably tomorrow I'll, I'm going to uh, read some other exercises about the uses of related pronouns and, and, and the uses of related clauses. Um, and I'm going to explain a little bit more about uh, how we can add uh, these relative 
clauses into a main sentence, okay? Because both, both of them can be used as, as a main sentence. Uh, and the other one as uh, a supported information or oh, um, another word to say that uh, uh, instead of saying supported information is like um, as a relative clause because basically what we are doing here is just to uh, just add in a uh, more information to, to the main sentence okay in, in order to express something in, in, ju in just one sentence that that's the, the aim of the relative clauses to include um, two different uh, kind of information in one sentence in order to be, a, well, we can say like, um, um, you know, what, what, what I mean is in order to, to provide a, a better understanding about what we are referring to. Get it? Do you get it? If if we can we can send you the ne the next uh, sentences to the WhatsApp group and you can review them because yes of course okay. thanks. Okay. Do you have any other question? Do you have any other question? No? Not this one. No, no, no. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, uh, the time is uh, over. It, uh, well, the, the 60 minutes has already passed, but I promise you that tomorrow we are going to be working um, on some other exercise and also I'll, I'm going to extend uh, the explanation about the uses of the relative clauses, okay? Um, so, right now so what the only thing that i can say is uh, guys uh have a nice night and uh we are going to see you tomorrow um, el día de mañana pues vamos a extender un poquito más esta información y eh, voy a intentar pues de incluir este y expandir un poco más los ejercicios que vamos a estar trabajando para que ustedes puedan practicarlos trabajen de momento ese worship eh, este, ya tienen, bueno, les dije que tomaran nota de con quienes iban a trabajar si gustan, pónganse en contactos con ellos eh, y trabajenlo en grupo, solamente este, traten de, de compartir esa información para, y eh, compartirse este, alguna explicación que tal vez este, nosotros no manejemos pues el otro compañero sí la maneja y de esa forma podemos este, ir quedando un poco más eh, claros con el objetivo del uso de las eh, cláusulas relativas eh, dentro de una oración. ¿De acuerdo? De acuerdo. Muy bien. Okay. Pasen una feliz noche. Cuídense. Bendiciones a todos. Nos vemos el día. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye